Hi there, I'm Nick Carver. I'm currently developing a game called Waycaster, and as part of that development, I'm working on uh, a bunch of water effects, including this waterfall. Um, I posted this, up, or I posted some gifs of the development of this uh, effect on Twitter a few days ago, and people had some questions about how it was put together. So um, yeah, I'm going to break that down for you. Hopefully it'll be useful. Before I do so, I just wanted to make people aware of a couple of articles or you know web pages that I used when I was uh, building these effects. Um, firstly, on Polycount, it's quite an old thread. It's from uh, 2012, but um, you know, still relevant. Um, you can see from the GIF here that the effect that I've built is very much based upon the ones that were done for Wind Waker, you know, back in 2003 on the GameCube. Um, yes, yeah, some some good info there worth checking out for sure. And then also, um, this was really helpful. Uh, Simon Trumpler has a website, simonshripe.de, um, and he was responsible for the amazing effects in the game Rhyme. A um, bunch of really cool stuff. He did a, a talk, it's like an hour long, and goes into quite a lot of detail uh, in terms of how he created several different effects, including the waterfalls, which are, you know, pretty damn cool. Um, so, yeah, lots of info to be learned from both of those things. Also, this one has lots of uh, examples underneath of effects that people have created after having watched the talk so yeah you can get lots more information probably more expert uh, input than you will from my particular effect you know just as a disclaimer you know I'm not a, an effects artist or a tech artist by trade so it's quite possible that my approach to creating this particular um, effect might be outdated or um, you know, inefficient. So take this stuff with a pinch of salt, use it as a starting point if you like, but definitely see what else, what other information is out there. Um, yeah. So with that out of the way, let's um, have a look at how this is put together. I'm just gonna hide, uh, hide a bunch of these things so that we're just looking at a single instance. Hide these as well. So to look at the mesh part of the effect initially, um, it's pretty pretty straightforward really. We've got you know the central um, waterfall feature itself, and then we've got a bunch of uh, polygon strips um, that are using cutout alpha textures. And you know, basically, just have a um, texture scrolling along them. Just play that really quick. Just turn off the effect so we can see that. So yeah, just scrolling uh, in a single direction. Um, you know, we've got these these ones on the edge that are simulating, you know, spray. And then these horizontal ones that are suggestive of, I guess, like the shimmer on the edge of the, like a kind of specular reaction on the edge of the fall, or maybe it's spray as well. I don't know. Whatever, whatever that is supposed to represent when you see it in a cartoon or an anime or a video game. Um, so yeah, we've actually got two overlays here, and they are. Uh, scrolling in the opposite direction to one another um, so you can see this one is scrolling more quickly and also it's got a bit of distortion and that's just done by um, playing with the UVs I'll just have a look at it quickly in Maya see if I can grab that yeah you can see like I've 
you know the the geometry itself is uniform but I've pulled some of the UVs in and out just so that when it's in motion you just get a little bit of uh, randomness to it a bit of variation um, talking about kind of UV distortion you can see as this is scrolling when it goes over the fall and also when it gets closer to the bottom of the mesh it appears to speed up and stretch and the way you do that is just to um, grab the UVs that you want to distort and then just you know just pull them closer together you know even though in terms of the mesh itself these are all uniformly spaced they're squished together um, at the bottom so that you know when when it moves when it scrolls through it uh, yeah it, it appears to speed up as it gets closer to the bottom um, what else okay so this ripple mesh uh, people were asking uh, one you know why is there so much geometry like is it necessary um, and two how does it how does it kind of move outwards you know from the edge sorry how does it move outwards from the center towards the edge uh, so the reason there's so much geometry is so that you get a really smooth whoa not that button you get a really smooth uh, line you know it's pretty close to being circular I could half the poly count of this thing um, and it still work okay but you start to see the faceting due to it being you know slightly lower in terms of its poly count um, I've also got two meshes here same as whoops same as the um, the piece up here and you know that there's the, the other way to tackle that would be to have just one mesh uh, but have a double layered shader double layered material and just have uh, two textures scrolling at different rates I'm not sure exactly which you know which is the more um, performance. I don't know which is more costly. I've just done it this way because I'm not particularly au fait with with putting my own shaders together. It's something that I'm intending to uh, invest some time in, maybe through Shader Graph. I'm not sure, but yeah, right now I'm just doing it with two separate meshes overlaid on top of each other, and then one is rotated slightly so that they um, they look slightly different when they move out. So in terms of how that scrolling is working, basically if I just grab a single quarter of the UVs, you see here. So yeah, the way that the UVs are done, I've uh, yeah, no, just done a planar projection and then laid out the UVs all on top of each other, you know, just cut them cut them into quarters and put them all together and then um, flattened out all of these lines so whereas you know on the mesh it's circular I've just squashed them all to be completely flat apart from the edges where I've kind of pulled it out for um, uh, in order to give the effect that it's like evaporating or evaporating I don't know but yeah the foam I guess is like breaking up uh, and slowing down so similar trick to on these other parts you know if you pull those verts pull those uvs out then you're going to get that effect but yeah basically if you you know if you lay them out if you lay your uvs out like this and um, flatten out the curve when when the when the texture scrolls uh, it will it will move in this direction outwards just by scrolling vertically. Uh, I think that's it in terms of the mesh components. So now if we look at the effects, um, there's a few different 
uh, particle emitters as part of this. The way I am creating this effect is rather than using just a uh, regular billboard particle, you know, just a, a single quad for the basic shape, I'm actually using, oops, hang on a sec, I'm actually using, it's more like a stud, um, so it's, it's, you know, a plane with an extra poly in the center that you pull out so that when the thing's in motion, it, it holds on to its um, sense of volume. Like if you you could just use a plane for this, but you'll see if I swap this out for a regular billboard rather than this mesh, it loses some of its just hit play. It loses some of its volume, just doesn't look as thick, and then at certain angles, particularly, it just yeah, yeah, I mean it works pretty well, you know, it's aligned to camera, so it does a fairly good job, but comparatively, if I just put the mesh back on, it's just a bit, you know, just a bit fuller, just feels a bit more like it's got volume to it. Uh, in the case of these edge ones, I am just using planes because they're so tiny. Um, so we've got, yeah, we've got, you know, the, the foam at the top, the spray coming off as it goes over the um, over the fall, then the foam at the bottom, and then foam moving outwards along with the, the ripple effects. Um, in terms of the actual material, Oh, I should have should have shown this stuff in Photoshop before. Let's have a look at the texture while we're here for the main waterfall. Um, so this is basically it for the main thing. You know, we've got the the body of the waterfall here, and then this part is the uh, like the, the the edge, the scrolling edge texture, and the part uh, is basically yeah, just the alpha texture. We've got the the gaps in the waterfall itself and then this is that scrolling edge part uh, for the ripple it's super simple and this yeah this is like a 512 texture I mean authored it at uh, 1024 but in game it's 512 this is a 256 could possibly be um, smaller even like if you're just doing alpha cutout there are ways that you can compress textures to way way smaller which I should probably invest some time in doing but yeah right now this is what it looks like it's just a couple of lines uh, and the um, texture for the particles is basically just this um, alpha cutout hexagonal shape so let's have a look at that again and that's pretty much it um, hopefully I haven't forgotten anything too major but yeah um, in terms of the budgeting for this thing, it works out at about 2,000, maybe 2,300 polys, like with all the um, effects being emitted. Um, you know, I think for like desktop and console, that's not too heavy. Like if you're going to have a scene with like tons of them in, then it's, yeah, maybe going to be a bit much, but I think it's okay, you know, generally for you know, a sort of medium spec system. Uh, if you're looking to do this on mobile, then I think you'd probably have to be more conservative. But, um, but yeah, that's how it's put together, really. Uh, if you want to um, keep up with the development of the game that I'm working on, or maybe see more tutorials like this, then you can follow me on Twitter. Um, either at Nick D. Carver or at Waycaster Game. Um, and I will put links to my Twitter account and to those uh, pages that I mentioned at the start in the description of this video. All right, hope this was useful. And uh, yeah, get in touch if you have suggestions of like how this could be, this effect could be made 
to be more efficient or you know just look better or whatever would love to hear your feedback all right thank you bye